Here's a problem from population biology. A catch and release program estimates the population size of a particular type of animal in a region. During the catch phase, 20 animals are tagged and then released. Several months later, 30 animals are captured and of those 30, seven of them have tags on them. What is the most likely population size? There are a number of assumptions in this problem that are necessary for the solution to apply and for us to be able to use the hypergeometric distribution. If these assumptions are not satisfied perfectly, the model is fairly robust and at least you will get a good estimate of the population size. Here are the assumptions. Number one, enough time passes between the two catches so that the animals disperse within the region. In other words, that's why several months were chosen and those animals will move around quite a bit. Second assumption, no tags fall off between the two catches. Third assumption, no new and animal enters the population by birth and by birth between the catches and no animal exits the population by death between the catches. The next which is difficult no animals migrate into or out of the region. Now this would be difficult if they were animals out in the wild but if you had for example fish in a pond this may be a uh, more reasonable assumption. Both catches involve sampling without replacement. So for the first catch of 20 animals, you, you capture an animal and then you tag that animal. You can't recapture the same animal and put a second tag on them. That doesn't make sense. Now on the second catch, where 30 animals were caught, when you catch a particular animal, you cannot let that animal go and then recatch it. In other words, you've got to um, do your sampling without replacement. Finally, capturing is done in such a manner that each uncaptured animal is equally likely to be captured. In previous slides, this assumption has been referred to as random sampling, and so that must apply as well. The goal here is to estimate the population size capital N. So it's a bit of a more complex, complex example than the initial hypergeometric example which concerned eggs. So first of all, what will X be, the random variable X that's going to have the hypergeometric distribution? Well, that will be the number of tagged animals that are captured in the second catch. And since sampling is again without replacement, this will have the hypergeometric distribution. And here is the probability mass function of x. In the denominator, we will have the, the population size, capital N, and we are, going to, we are going to capture 30 animals from that population size. In the numerator, of those 20 animals that contain tags from the first catch, we want to have exactly x. And out of the n minus 20 animals that don't have tags, we are going to have 30 minus x of those. And that will apply for x equals 0, 1, 2, up to 20. So there is the random variable x. What has not been brought into the picture yet is that we actually saw 7. So what we would like to do is we would like to plot the probability that x is equal to 7 which of course you can calculate above as f of 7 for several values of the population size n. And so that is done on the next slide 
and this spike right here for example is f of 7 when you have 80 animals in the population the spike right here is the probability of getting exactly 7 when there are 81 animals in the population and you'll notice that this trails off its peak happens to be right here and this occurs at n equals 86 and to use the notation which we looked at a little bit earlier when we were looking at maximum likelihood estimation in the case of the horse kick data the likelihood the maximum likelihood estimator for n in this case will be the one that is most likely to have given the result that we obtain namely seven animals with tags and that is n hat equals 86 so the answer to the question is if all those assumptions are satisfied then the most likely population size is 86 animals.